Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I am going to share with you some tips and tricks related to Mizu M1 Note. So guys, we have the M1 Note in front of us. So let me just firstly lock the device. And now the device is locked and to wake up the device, we can simply double tap the screen and it is in the lock screen mode. Over here, you can simply swipe up to unlock the device. Let me lock it once again. On the lock screen, if you swipe right, you'll go to the camera. So this ring over here is a home button and it has a backlight and it only comes in white and it is your notification light for the device. You don't have any other notification light apart from this. You can optionally choose to disable this light from the settings. So the main function with this particular capacitor button is take you to the home screen. And other thing that you can do is simply press and hold this ring to put the device to sleep. So let me unlock the device. So now, as I've said, all it does is it will simply take you to the home screen. So now if you want to check the recent apps, you need to swipe from the bottom of the screen that is from over here. And these are the list of apps that are currently running. So you can simply swipe any of the app upwards to kill that particular app. And now you can simply select any of the app to open the application or else simply swipe any app down which will kill all the applications. As with MIUI, you can't change the view of this recent apps. You are stuck with this small icons. So let's go on ahead. Let me just open up the phone dialer. This is the phone dialer and as you can see, you have a small bar over here, which in this device is called as smart bar. As you have already noticed, apart from the normal back button, home button and recent apps, you can see additional options over here. And these options change according to the app that you are currently using. So as you can see, the options have changed on the smart bar. So this is one nice feature about this OS that is FlyMe. So if you are not comfortable with using this smart app bar, they have something called as smart touch. So to activate that, simply swipe the notification bar. And in this blank area, simply swipe again and you'll see all the toggles. Or else you can simply press this button over here to expand all the toggles. Now the last toggle, this is the smart touch and let me show you the bubble. So on the screen you can see a bubble over here. It has Apple iPhone like functionality. I hope you can see the bubble over here. So guys, this is the smart touch that I was talking about. It has similar features as that of iPhone, but it is, but it has been tweaked for Android. For example, if you simply touch this bubble, it will go back. That is as if you have pressed the back button. And if you swipe up on the bubble, it will take you to the home screen. If you swipe down, it will show you the notification bar. And if you swipe left, it will switch the application that you are currently in. If you go to the recent apps, these are the apps that are currently running in the background. So using this smart bubble, you can easily switch between those apps. So if you do a simple swipe left, you can switch between the recent apps and simply swipe right again to come back. So once you are at the end, you can't go anymore. So you can simply swipe left or right or up and down and simply touch. And to move the position of the bubble, simply press and hold and move it. So guys, let's go on. Many of you might have been wondering how I am able to display the network usage on the top. So for that, simply go to settings and in the settings, go to accessibility. And over here, we have an option that says current network. So simply enable this particular option to display the network usage on the status bar. So guys, in the same accessibility section, we have additional settings. For example, the gesture wake up. So if we enter into that particular list, we have all these options that is double click. So when you double click on the screen, it will wake up, swipe up to unlock the device. We can assign additional options that is swipe down and so on. So let's go back. So the next thing is the slide rightwards in lock screen. So by default, it has been selected as the camera app. We can change the app to our choosing. So going on over here, we can choose to enable or disable this backlit on the home screen on the home button. Let me just show you now the light is disabled and now once again, it is enabled. Additionally, developer options are automatically enabled out of the box. So you can see the developer options in this section. 
So to enable USB debugging, simply enable this particular option. Let's go back. On that note guys, if you are not able to install apps from the Google Play Store, try to stop the installation and try to download it once again or else simply restart the device and try to install it. I was not able to install apps on the first boot so I have simply restarted the device and after that I was able to install the apps. So no need to panic about that. So going on ahead, one important thing about this smart touch or smart bubble is that once it is enabled, you won't see the smart bar. So as you can see earlier we were able to see the smart bar over here. Now we are not able to see that. Now let me simply disable this smart touch. So now you can see the smart bar with the back button. So let's move on. Out of the box, the font of this particular device is a little huge for a normal device user. So to change the font, simply go to settings and in the settings go to display. And in the display you have this font size. I have chosen it to small and the default thing is this. I prefer to go with the small. So anyway, let's move on. So guys, just like any Chinese smartphone manufacturer, this launcher doesn't have a app dialer. All the apps that you install are thrown on the home screen. So this is the home screen. So you can have four or five icons on the dock and you can simply press and hold to get additional options. All you can do is arrange the list or else add widgets or shortcuts. To add shortcuts you need to go to widget section and in this section you will be able to see the shortcuts. Just in case if you want to go to stock android look then I suggest you to install Apex launcher or Nova launcher or the Google Now launcher which will make you look as if it is a vanilla android or stock android. So guys going on we have an application over here that comes pre-installed that is the security which is very similar to the security app on MIUI. So over here you have the basic features such as junk clean which cleans up unnecessary files, large files which will show you all the list of large files in your device, app clean which allows you to uninstall unnecessary apps and most importantly you have something important called as virus clean which comes inbuilt and apart from that one important thing is permission section, simply select that and over here you have the launch section that is, that is the list of apps that run when your system boots. So if you think that your device is slow, simply disable all the apps that you don't want to run when your system restarts every time. So if you go to notify, so these are all the apps that are going to give a notification. So if any app is annoying you, then simply disable that from here. So after that in the safe section, you have all the list of permissions and the apps which are requesting that particular permission. So let's go back. And finally, we have the traffic manager. It is simply like a normal data manager on any Android device which will enable us to restrict the data usage. Coming to the gestures, to take the screenshot, all we need to do is simply press the volume up or down button and the power button both at the same time. So it is that simple. You can either use volume up and power button or volume down and power button. So going on guys, now let's check out the default or stock explorer. So this is the stock file manager and we have something very interesting called as vault over here. Simply select that and it will ask you to set up a lock screen password. Let's set up a lock screen password very quickly. Unlike other devices, you only have a pin password and you have something called as a complex password. Let's go with a simple password. So now as we have entered the lock screen password, we are able to access the vault. So using this vault, we can hide images and videos. Let me just quickly hide an image. So there are some screenshots in this device. Simply press and hold. Now select menu. And over here you have an option that says move to vault. And let's check out the vault. Every time you enter the vault, you need to enter the password. So there you have it. Now once again you can move it from the vault to any other location. Now let's go to another location. Press OK to move that file back to this location. So that is one nice feature out of the box. 
there is another feature called as guest mode on this device so let me just show you the guest mode to activate the guest mode it is necessary that you have a lock screen password and once you have a lock screen password go to settings and in the security section you have something called as passcode lock simply select that and enter the password and over here you have the guest mode simply select that and make sure you enable it and give a guest password so every time you lock the device you will be asked this lock screen password and if you enter your password you will normally enter into your profile and if you enter the guest password that is four ones in this case you will enter the guest mode and the switching between the master profile and the guest profile is very quick on this device using the guest mode you can restrict several privileges on the guest so guys let's move on in the accessibility section of the settings you have something interesting called as scheduled power off and power on so this is a scheduled section over here we can schedule a power off and a power on in many devices i have seen a scheduled power off but i didn't see a scheduled power on so it is really one nice feature so guys out of the box this particular device comes with a keyboard called as touch pal so this is the keyboard and let me just show you some nice gestures about this if you swipe up on this top row you can enter numbers let me just show you that so if you click normally you will be entering characters or alphabets and even on this lower letters if you simply click you will be entering the letters and if you swipe down you will be entering the alphabets so that's it guys thanks for watching the video if you found this video to be helpful Please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this.